welcome back to another episode of Housework. Can you guys tell I'm excited? This is my first housework video of 2021. Today what we're doing is tackling my two cold closets on my first floor. This will actually be closets eight and nine out of this whole house that I have remodeled since we moved in. So they were the last two for me to get to, but I am extremely excited to get this project checked off my to-do list. The cool thing about today's DIY is that it only took three days and that's only because we had to repair and paint the walls, but it's definitely a project that you can do yourself with a minimal budget. We only spent about $200 to get both of these closets updated and I'm so excited, so let's get started. All right, so a little bit of background on the problem. These are the two coat closets here. They're kind of situated on either side of my main entrance. They're kind of like twin coat closets. These closets have never been updated, so they are original to the house, which means they are 25 years old so let me show you guys what 25 year old closets look like so here is closet number one looking real fugly you can tell the age by this pull string light but we are not addressing that today what I want to address today is the paint and the spider webs and really utilizing this closet in the way that it was intended as you can tell there's nothing even hanging in here because after that pole broke we just kind of stopped trying and then we've just been using this closet as like an unofficial storage container and it hasn't even been really good for that because we don't even know what's in here in closet number two we've been using to store outerwear but because it was only meant for half the load it's a little overcrowded the shelving in here is so dated that there's no way to even really keep it up because these materials are not even available anymore and we actually do not have a solution whatsoever for the shoes the baseboards are really aged and just overall the look of these closets just really doesn't work for our entryway we really tried to go for a more elegant and modern approach in here so the closets need to catch up so let's go ahead and see what we can do so like I mentioned this is a three-day project so day one is going to consist of clearing out and sorting all this junk and ripping out all the old shelving and like always I'm finding a bunch of random stuff that my husband just threw in here so I'm going to go ahead and start a pile for him a pile for junk and just really sorting out what's going to stay what's going to be relocated and what's going to go in the trash I've kind of always hated these closets ever since we bought this house but my dad had convinced me that we should just sort of leave it because he's like oh they're just closets it's not a big deal and so that's kind of what we did but what I found is that I really never liked it and I always just kept the doors closed in an attempt to just kind of ignore the ugliness so that I wouldn't have to deal with it. And then I was pretty distracted by some of the other projects I was working on in the house and some of the other higher priority closets like the ones attached to the bedrooms. So I'm pretty sure that that's how this got neglected for so long. But what we're gonna do today is tackle it DIY style. And I really am excited to show you guys how easy this can be. So what you see here is just me kind of clearing out that second closet, getting all those coats out of there. And honestly, while I was doing this, I was really starting to realize how heavy all this stuff is and I was starting to think about the different solutions for shelving that I would have as options for stuff that's so heavy so there wasn't a super strict solid plan in place I kind of had a general idea of what I needed to do so I just kind of dived in and just trusted myself but now that we have everything out I'm just noticing that it's time to start cleaning and it's so gross <laughs> So here's the scenario. We've got lots of dust, lots of spider webs, and just pretty much aged and worn materials. So these baseboards, this shoe base, the paint is chipping from the previous paint job. Astonishingly gross. But that's okay because we can fix it. So first things first, I'm just removing all of the old shelving. And all this stuff was super heavy. You guys know building materials from the 90s were just extra heavy for no reason. So I'm just using my stud finder really quick just to get a general idea of where those reinforcement beams are for the mounting. And I got a little confused because it wasn't making a whole lot of sense. So I definitely had to phone dad. And I'm so glad I did because he helped me out a lot. Got my confidence level back up. So I am ready to get started. All right, allow me to introduce my super professional demolition tools. Okay. Okay, we have a hammer and a screwdriver and I'm just going to use those interchangeably to get those mounting materials off of that wall and it looked like the builders had used a nail gun and planted those directly into the studs so I really had to pull 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 to get those out it was really really tough but I was really trying to do this as easy as possible by keeping all of these materials whole because had they broken all up it would have been a lot more difficult to get it off but yeah it was starting to feel a little dangerous so I went and got some eye protection and a face mask just 
just to protect myself from all the stuff coming out of that wall. So now I'm ready to go ahead and tackle all of the other ones. And some of those nails were really stubborn. So like the ones in the corner, I definitely had to go and grab my pliers so that I could just manually twist and pull those out because I could not get that hammer into those corners. But for the most part, this was pretty easy to do. Now that all that old shelving is out, I'm gonna use my spatula and go ahead and prep the walls for spackling. Nothing too scientific here, just evening out the wall, getting some of that chip paint out of the way. And I'm just sweeping down the spider webs and the dust and everything. And I know I probably look funny sweeping the wall, but you know, I couldn't think of a better tool for this. Why not just use a broom? And for this mud work, I'm gonna be using my dry decks. It has a time indicator on it, so it goes on pink, and when it's ready, it turns white. Not that we're really gonna need that because we're gonna let this dry overnight, but it's a nice like beginner's spackle to use. So I'm just showing you guys a quick demonstration of how I go about this mud work. And this part doesn't have to be precise, right? But I do like to get it as smooth as possible, and I like to use as little spackle as possible because when it comes to that sanding job, <laughs> the next day, your job is gonna be a lot more difficult if you're all sloppy about that initial application. All right, we're into day two and it's time to sand and paint. I'm gathering all of my materials and setting out some floor protection so that I can create a little workspace and we can go ahead and get started. For this job today, I'm using a little sanding block. It's like a little handheld sponge wrapped in sandpaper pretty much. And I'm just going to manually sand these walls. I burned a lot of calories doing this. Um, they do sell the little automatic sanding ones that have like a hose attached and it sucks out the dust for you and all that. But I don't have one. I probably should get one maybe next time. But yeah, whatever you use, just make sure that you get the wall nice and smooth. Here's an example of before I sand it, and here's an example of what it looks like after. Just get it smooth so when you paint it, it'll look flawless. In these next couple clips, you're gonna see a series of vacuuming attempts, me trying to get this dust up. You guys, I hate spackle dust specifically because it is so fine, it gets everywhere, and you will be cleaning it for weeks, I promise. So first I was using my old Onsen vacuum, and then I switched to this new Shark Rocket Pro one that I purchased from Walmart not too long ago, and it's pretty good. This one claims to have a little bit more power and dirt removal technology so that's what drew me to it so far so good it does work pretty well as you can see it got up a lot of that dust I do like how it collapses and I'm able to clean underneath things really easily so I would recommend this one if you guys want to learn a little bit more I'll put the link below all right now that our freshly repaired walls are ready it's time to paint so I'm just pulling out this little paint set that I got from Home Depot and my polyfilm just to protect the floors the most time-consuming part of painting is prepping to paint because you don't want to cut any corners so I'm using my frog tape you guys know I love frog tape over your regular painters tape and I use this for paint lines right when I want really precise paint lines because this particular tape has paint repellent built into it so it's not gonna get any bleeding and it's not going to make any mistakes it's gonna be flawless but painters tape is still really good for surfaces so I like to use it to tape down my floor protection I'm using a basic ultra white paint this one is by Bayer I got it from Home Depot it's a paint and primer in one and it has a low odor and is long-lasting which is great I thought for a closet especially one as small as these so I'm just gonna give it a good stir and go ahead and apply it to my roller and start painting these ugly tan walls now I started right in the middle for dramatic effect but you definitely want to start in the corners first if you can especially in a small space like this I just find that it's easier to cover up those brush strokes which makes for a nicer finish the tan paint color that you saw in both of these closets was what the whole first floor of this house was painted with when we first moved in I'm not sure when that was done but it was very ugly and unflattering so we had repainted and we used repost gray by Sharon Williams <music> I 
find it utterly remarkable what a coat of paint can do. Just look how much brighter this closet looks than the other just because the paint is brighter. You would think there was a totally different wattage used and they have the exact same bulbs. Anyway, while that first coat of paint is drying, it's time to move on to those baseboards. Remember I was telling you guys that they were so dirty and worn, so we're going to just wake them right on up with a fresh coat of paint. Instead of spending more money and time into trying to have these replaced, I really truly believed if I just painted them that they would look brand new all over again. So I am painting right over the baseboard, shoe base, and the caulk. And being the detailed person that I am, I had noticed that the tops of these doors had been missed when they were painting them white because they're not originally white doors. So I went ahead and climbed right on up and filled that area in. After that second coat and before calling it a night, I'm just doing some last minute detailed work, just finishing touches and things. At this point in the process, you guys, I was feeling extremely accomplished. I really started to see the transformation sort of happening right in front of me. So I was really, really motivated for the next day. And here we are already at day three. It's time to mount these new shelves and clean up our mess. So I took a trip to Home Depot and visited their shelving department where I picked up this whole closet made system. It's supposed to be super easy to install and durable and the guys there were able to cut the shelves for me in the exact dimensions that I needed. For this job you do need a few tools and supplies but the most important of everything is going to be these drywall anchors that I got from Menards. I'll show you guys later in the video exactly how this works but this is a safe way to mount something really heavy directly into the drywall when you don't have access to a stud. And let's just take a moment to appreciate this beautifully restored baseboard. I am so glad I didn't waste any time replacing this. Now it could use a little bit more caulk but we're gonna skip that since it's just a closet. kicking off this shelf mounting by measuring out exactly where I want my shelf tracks because I want them mounted the exact same way in each closet. So I'm going to be using my level for precision and then I'm going to mark off exactly where I need to make my drill marks and create those holes. This was super easy to do. The only tip I would say is if you're using multiple different supplies, read the instructions on everything, assume nothing. So here are my plastic toggle high performance drywall anchors. They're going to go into the wall like so. Once they're inside the wall they're going to pop open and provide that 159 pound tension. I'm just tapping my wall anchor securely into the wall and then the set comes with a little peg that I can then insert into the toggle which will force it open on the other side of the wall. With all four installed I'm going to grab my drill and screws and install those two closet made tracks. With the tracks securely in place I'm going to go ahead and pop my brackets in and get the stickers off first. Oh they were on there honey. Now what you're about to see is my favorite part about the closet made system and that's the versatility. You can really put these brackets anywhere you want. Even those tracks, you can choose different sizes. You can put multiple shelves. There's just so much versatility to really customize these products for your space. And I was really nervous, but the shelf fit perfectly in the space, so that means my measurement was right on the money. Just putting the rest of the hanging storage together, and you guys, the pole that I'm using is not white like the other pieces, and that's because they were all sold out. I was so sad. They said they don't expect to get any more for a very long time because of the pandemic so I just went with what they had I figured I could always replace it later and the pole also needed to be cut down to size so my dad helped me with that all right now the moment of truth before we move on to the other closet and that's to make sure that everything is level and honey is to the T <music> Really quick, shoe storage, right? So while I was at Home Depot, I also picked up this closet made shoe rack, kind of four tiered, you know, shoe storage thingy. <laughs> Must admit though, kind of flimsy. I probably wouldn't purchase this if it was going to be just kind of freestanding, but because the dimensions fit so perfectly within the closet space, I felt like the walls would give it that kind of reinforcement that it definitely needs. Yet another moment of truth, the final one, is to remove this tape and this floor protection to see what kind of damage we did to the floor. But using frog tape, you guys, there's no never any damage, it's literally always flawless. Okay you guys, now it's time to see the final look with the before and after, let's go.
doing was kind of this his and hers setup since there were technically two closets and I feel like this way we can at least organize our things separately so it's easier to find when you're looking for something. The biggest transformation that I would say happened in this closet, you guys, was the painting. It really brightened this space up so, so much. I'm so glad I decided to go with a bright white because for this space to be so small, it really opened it up. And I really like this closet made closet organization. It's really, really cool and practical and easy to put up as well as being easy to take down if you ever needed to do that in the future. What I did was went ahead and added some shoe storage, which made a huge difference because not only are the shoes and boots off of the floor, which will help to protect the floor, but also there is plenty of storage for when we have guests over. And if they wanna take their shoes off and get more comfortable, there is a place to put them. Them. I wanted to save some space with the coat, so I went ahead and picked up some thinner hangers because the ones that we had were a little bit bulky. So I wanted something a little more practical and space saving. So I got lucky when I went to Home Goods. I found some really affordable packs of flocked hangers, and I really love having the flocked hangers because they give you a lot of grip when you're hanging your coats. So no matter the material of the coat, it's most likely not going to slip off the hanger. And these baskets that I picked up from at home, they were super cheap, you guys. I want to say the large ones were like seven dollars and the little tiny one was like four bucks i'm just using the larger ones for like hats and scarves and then the little small one for gloves it has really been working out well you guys because i'm telling you gloves and hats get lost so much around here so it's nice having a place to put them i love being able to utilize both closets and i don't have to feel embarrassed so you guys let me know how do you think i did on these closets what do you think when my dad saw it he was like oh my god this looks so professional and that's a huge compliment coming from my dad for sure so I'm so excited about today's project, you guys, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that this has empowered you to improve the look of your own closets at home. If you do, comment below and let me know. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, definitely do so because there will be more videos like this one. And I'm excited that you guys are here, and I will talk to you in my next one. Mwah! Bye!